All right. Hey, everybody. This is uh, Holy Saturday here at the Harrison House. Uh, this is Jeremiah here, my wife, Michaela, my chief artist uh, behind our the Illustrated Liturgical Year Project. We want to put together a little video. We want to try to do this every Saturday where we walk through that week of the calendar of, of the week coming up ahead. So, and as tomorrow is Easter, and we just released our Easter calendar, finally after, what, <laughs> Two and a half, it's, it takes about two and a half weeks to put one of these spreads together. There's a lot of work that goes into this. So I have here Michaela, and I want to walk you guys through uh, the first week of our Easter calendar. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. And I'm going to move my little window over to the side so we can see. Oop, oop, no, not that. There we go. Move us over. That's right. <laughs> move us over. So tell, tell us, oh, one of the first things I want to draw your attention to is if, if you've been following us, you've been noticing all of our calendars, we have uh, the frame that frames the time and then the images, the days, each of the days. And typically we've been choosing a material uh, for the frame. So, for example, the Lent calendar was wood uh, for the wood of the cross, right? It's kind of a dark color. We were trying to you know, capture colors that really do go with the season. Well, here in Easter... Uh, it's, it's like a, a white limestone. It's like a what? what else? You said an another, alabaster. Okay. Or an alabaster. Very rem light colored. Rem reminds me of the tympanum above the Abbey Church or the monastery where we, where we are. But you typically the frame is just that material. This is the first time we decided to, uh, Michaela decided to put color into it. And so she, in order to put color into it, she turned to mosaics. Mosaics. So, so tell us about uh, this top mantle piece here. Well, we have the word that. Uh, we are looking forward to being able to say tomorrow the Alleluia, and it's uh, it's a mosaic, um, and this um, mosaics are used in architecture, um, both inside churches and outside churches, and so um, the reason why we're careful to not just introduce color like we do during the days is because we noticed <clears throat> that kids were getting confused and counting things as days that weren't days, <laughs> and so. Uh, we're building a language with these calendars, and so um, we try to always keep the color, uh, the watercolor pencil combination only for, for the actual days, and then all the um, frame is architectural, and so I pull from um, Romanesque, medieval type um, images, uh, or churches, uh, to pull some of these architectural elements. I mean loosely obviously this this is an illustration so i have a lot of leeway folk, folk illustrations but uh yeah. that's kind of the language we're, we're so building. walk us through the scene here we have now if you remember from our holy week from oh and you, you hear the birds in the background those are yes, little parakeets our <laughs> we're, we're in our living room but uh so uh, last time we left our lord on holy saturday which is today uh he was going down and pulling you know trampling down the devil and taking all the souls out of, mm -hmm. uh, out, of, out of limbo. And here we see him visiting his mother and bringing with him all of the souls. Now, you mentioned, now there, there are conventions in East and West on how to illustrate this. Mm -hmm. So Christ is it's, it's in the East, where Christ is always illustrated, bringing Adam and Eve and all the souls. Tell us a little more about that, East and West. Right, so uh, when I do a lot of image research for this and pulling from primarily medieval images and from uh, Eastern icons, and um, I look for common themes that are being repeated over and over again. And so here, um, the East always has Christ lifting Adam and Eve, or just Adam, out of, um, out of limbo or out of hell, the upper level of hell. Um, and so here, uh, but then in, in uh, medieval art, he's often shown um, kind of stepping out of the tomb, showing he's, um, he's coming out by his own power yeah, huh? and so this i sort of have both here you can see he's stepping out he's got adam and eve there's saint joseph there behind them coming to our lady now and if when we finish this we're going to do a quick walkthrough of some of the images that were some of the inspiration for this but going along so here at the top i see you have uh you have the a depiction of the holy ghost and god the father tell us a little bit about that um so god the father well, this, in the story of creation, God created light on the first day. And so um, this is an image from that. And then Christ rose from the dead on the first day of the week. And this is like the eighth day, right? Yeah, there's a lot of symbolism in there. But um, And then the Holy Spirit is, or Holy Ghost, is, is between the two of them. Um, 
And so I have to start. And then we, and we proceed to some things that are very important that happen in our world this time. You have in the liturgy, you have the Paschal, the tonight. lighting of the Paschal fire tonight. And this kind of comes, you know, uh, from our monks, right? The monks light a great big fire and they light the Easter candle, which we'll, we'll go to the other side and show the Easter candle because we have that in here okay. too. We have Moses leading the children of Israel through the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. And then this is the night where baptism and confirmations could... Now, the confirmations, they typically happen, they can't happen at the, uh, the, the vigil. Is that correct? Yeah, I know the vigil. Yeah. So for people entering into the That's church, right. though, they receive all three all sacraments. All three, all at once. And mm -hmm. you wanted us to talk about the Paschal candle. Yes, because there's it's very particular, the elements on it. Many people might be familiar with it, but um, zoom in on the cross part. Yeah, I'll zoom in. Um, the Paschal candle always has the Alpha and the Omega, meaning no, Christ is the beginning and the end. Um, there's always the five grains of incense, which represent the five wounds. Um, it has the year, so it's 2021. And um, those are those are the basic elements, and it's decorated with other beautiful images, usually. Um, and then the exulta is is the, the this beautiful chant that's done at the vigil tonight. And so I just put the words there to, to try to put in as much stuff as I can fit. <laughs> There's so much beautiful stuff in the liturgy. So, so we'll proceed on to oh, the, oh, wait. the dogwoods. Oh, the dogwoods, that's so right. So we chose, I really wanted to put the dogwood flowers in because they're a beautiful um, symbol of Easter, or the of the triduum, really, because you have the, these are flowers that bloom here um, around this time. They are shaped like a cross. They have uh, little holes, or like little, um, yeah, holes at, at the four corners that are tinged with red. So they're white flowers with these red, right, where like um, the, like, it's a reminder of, of the nails, um, the wounds of, of our Lord. Um, so I'm super happy to have, have those in there this year. So. And they're blooming now, right? Uh, they're just oh. starting to come out. Down in Texas, I think Taylor Marshall already posted a picture. I think they're blooming down there. The and he talked about the symbolism. But they're just starting to bloom up here because we're up in Oklahoma. So. so we have here for the for the Sunday, the image, an illustration from the gospel that mm -hmm. day, for the empty tomb. Three women coming. And then if you notice, if you've been with us, you'll, you'll notice the banners on each of these days that symbolizes they're all first class. When the words are at the top. First class feast, when the words are at the top like mm -hmm. that. And then each of these images comes from the gospel of that day. Mm -hmm. You have the road to Emmaus. You have uh, uh, our Lord at the at the seaside when he's roasting the fish. Peter, and Peter jumps into him. the water. And then also mention, as you see the different uh, characters, you'll notice that their clothing mm -hmm. is the same. That helps kids when they look at this to be able to see who's being depicted. Right. across the calendar. So Mary Magdalene's wearing the same clothes in that in Easter Thursday as she is at the foot of the cross. Same with John. And then Peter is pretty recognizable. He has gray hair with the blue, um, blue and red. Um, now, except when he's swimming, because then he didn't have his overcloak, so I put him with the red. And, the and, then, of, and then, of course, in the frame, we have the, the seasons, the, the moon changes. Oh, yes, the right, moon so phases. It's hard to you <laughs> lose track of them <laughs> with everything else. But they're yes. there, buried, buried in there, buried in there. So... Our goal is to kind of try to put together a little video like this each week where we walk through just the events, you know, the imagery of that week and what's embedded there. Next week, we'll walk through the second week of Easter. Right. And uh, I'd like to take a moment now to walk through the uh, some of the imagery that inspire this. Our source images. Our source images. Mm -hmm. So here's a, this is a... What, what time frame is this? This is, uh, this is a little later. So this is not exactly uh, medieval. medieval. This would be more... I'm not, I'm not an art historian, but like, you know, Renaissance a little later. But there are some more. Let's keep going through. So this one is medi medieval here. Here's Christ coming to see his mother. Um, go ahead and go through. And I see she's like seated here in this uh, this foliage, which is, is that kind of what influenced you when you had her in, oh, let me go the other way, had her in the, nestled in the Alleluia? Um, not necessarily. Uh, I... Uh, I don't know exactly why I wanted to do that. I it think fits. I just wanted to put more in there. <laughs> and so it just kind of spilled out. It didn't all fit in the Sunday frame. So it had to go into the Alleluia a little bit. Yeah. Oh, I love this picture. This is Christ and Mother. It's so peaceful. He doesn't have the souls from Limbo with him in this particular picture. But Can it's still gorgeous. Yes. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Okay, here's a, this one is more where here's Christ stepping out of the tomb. He's got his knee up there coming out. All right, go ahead. Okay, here's Eastern. So this here's is the Eastern icon where he's drawing with him. Adam. Adam and Eve and all the souls there. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, there's right. another one. Another medieval Christ stepping out of the tomb. This is definitely still late, late. I don't even know if you can call it technically medieval because it has 
perspective. You can see the mountains in the distance, but it's definitely older. This looks very similar to, um, is it the Ghent altarpiece? Yeah, that's very also similar. later. Very later. Uh, this is not medieval, but this was just the three women at the tomb. And so I, I had it for, for garments. Garments are always the hardest thing to draw. Oh, I love this one. This is uh, Christ, and this was part of the inspiration for the rays of light. I just thought this, he looks so powerful in this one, which I really liked a lot. Okay. Oh, here's another one, him coming out with the guards. Okay, here's one where Christ is bringing uh, the, soul, the souls the with him to yeah, meet Our Lady. To meet our lady. And I think that brings that us, it? yep, that's okay. it. That brings us to the end of this. Okay. So, well, thank you guys. Just want to re reiterate again, you know, this project we're on to illustrate the entire liturgical year of the church. Now, right now we're offering these as digital downloads, but our, our goal is to get to where we can have an entire year, all packaged together, printed and shipped to you. But we need this time to actually do the illustration of each and every mm -hmm. season. We're building uh, a sort of illustration capital, if you will. And each year we will rearrange some of this art, we'll refresh and renew some of the art so that way we can release a calendar each year. And our, we need to get to the point where we can actually print them out and then uh, I would like to see them in you know, Catholic bookstores, you know, maybe parish bookstores and such. But this, we need support through this time as we build, build up this imagery. So we're able to offer it as a digital. And I know for many families that's kind of difficult because you've got to have your printer ready to go and not everybody is, is ready to do that. But as many of you that can that, that see what we're trying to do and want to value, we ask your support, purchase you know, purchase the calendar, consider a, a membership, and realize that we're going somewhere in the sense that hopefully within a year, year and a half, we'll be able to offer a whole year altogether. And the prices will actually be quite, quite a bit less when we're able to print them off like that. And then in addition, we've got uh, coloring page collections. Each one of these days that you see, uh, Michaela formats them all in black and white before she does the color. So we have a you know a black and white calendar available. We have color, but then also she makes each of these images uh, about twice the size, and so mm -hmm. we can make them as full you know full color display images and black and white coloring mm -hmm. pages. So we're sort of building a suite of of things that you can bring into your home to help keep families in touch you know, connected to the liturgy with their hearts and their minds. So may you all have a blessed Easter and a, a good Holy Saturday, and we'll see you soon.